If you've always wanted to try a New Orleans style beignet but don't live in New Orleans, then my homemade beignet recipe is for you. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Hey, you're watching Prep Your Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. These beignets will be ready before you know it, so let's get started. It's really cold today, so I actually filled this up with warm water and I'm just gonna dump it out. It helps warm that glass up. If it's ice cold, it brings the temperature down too much. Three quarters of a cup of that warmish water. I'm gonna add one packet of yeast to this. And I've measured out half a cup or 100 grams of sugar for this recipe. I'm gonna add about half of that in now. Give it a little bit of a mix. And we're gonna set this aside for five minutes or until it's nice and frothy. And right now we're gonna be measuring out three and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour. Add a teaspoon of salt into the flour and give it a quick whisk. And then we're just gonna set it aside for a few moments. All right, let's check on that yeast. What? Look at that, monster, okay. Now I'm gonna add half a cup of milk and I've warmed it up so it's not ice cold. Mmm, two teaspoons of vanilla. These are gonna be the best beignets ever. Now I'm gonna add one room temperature egg, in you go, as well as the remaining half cup of sugar, as well as the remaining quarter cup of sugar, because I already used half of it. Okay, give this a whisk. And now my favorite thing to do whenever I make any kind of a enriched bread, or any bread at all really, is to add half of the flour in first, little by little, and then whisk as I go. This way you'll have a really nice smooth paste and your mixer is just gonna mix it up so much more easily. And right now we just have a nice smooth batter, almost like you would have when you make crepes. Okay. Get that stand mixer out and now we're gonna put it to use. <sighs> clap, clap, it's the letter of the day. It's the letter, it's the letter, the letter of the day. Pop a dough hook onto your stand mixer. You can also use a hand mixer for this if you want to. Uh, most of them come with little dough spiral attachments. I get that question quite a lot. We're gonna add the remaining flour as we mix on a medium speed after we plug this in. All right, now let's add the remaining flour. Once the dough comes together, you're gonna add three tablespoons of room temperature butter, and it can be a little bit softer than you might normally use, even melted if that's what you wanna do. All right, toss it in. All the butter's in there. It'll mix up for about four minutes on medium speed, and you'll see it's just an amazing, sticky, but really smooth, nice dough. Sticky though. Okay, by the by, whenever you have a super sticky dough, like this one is, what? Um, that's just how enriched, enriched doughs are. You're loading them with as much delicious things as possible, like butter and milk. So they kind of have a hard time acting like a normal dough. That's fine. All you have to do is use a little bit of flour in some strategic places. You don't want to load too much flour in here, but for example, right now I'm scraping the bowl down and as it mixes, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on the edge and that'll help it pull away. It's totally optional, but if you're standing by your mixer and have nothing else to do, why not? <laughs> if your dough seems too wet, you can always add up to a quarter cup of flour, but it should be fine if you measured everything out carefully. Let's take a look. You want your dough to be sticky, but not stick to your finger. So right now, oh, it's not sticking to my finger. How nice. Well, maybe a little bit. I'm gonna run this for just a few more seconds and then it's gonna be ready to go into a bowl. This dough smells amazing. I cannot wait to fry these up, but the dough has to rise first and you have two choices right now. You can either let it rise in a warm place for about two hours or you can make these a day ahead or even two days ahead and just keep the dough in the fridge and it'll you know, rise up more slowly. I've added some oil to this large bowl. I'm just going to use a paper towel. You could also use your hands if you want to swoop it up. I'm not gonna lie to you like so many people do with these recipes and say, oh, just an hour is fine. Uh-uh, an hour is fine for pizza dough or something with like nothing in it but flour and water and yeast. If you're adding any fats or um, delicious things to this, it's gonna take a longer. Cover it up with plastic and pop it into your warming drawer or your fridge. 
After a few hours of rise time, you're gonna have a monster bit of dough here. And let me tell you one thing that can go wrong. This is a sticky dough, as I've mentioned before, and you're gonna wanna use more flour than you might expect on your counter. So let's liberally flour it and none of our sticking problems will happen. This happened a little bit in my recipe development, so I had to really emphasize it in the notes. <laughs> Before I roll this out, I'm gonna add a candy thermometer to a big pot, add some oil, and then set it over medium high heat. I want this to get nice and hot by the time these are all cut up, and this happens pretty quick. We want this to get to 360, so really hot, nice and golden brown. Okay, we're gonna invert the dough onto our well-floured counter. Hope I used enough oil. It's a little bit sticky, but I'm going to <laughs> gonna use a spatula to get the rest out. A little bit of flour for the top and my hands too. And I'm gonna pat this out almost like you would for a cinnamon roll. Just pat and stretch uh, into a rectangle or square, and you do not want this to be too thin. If you roll this out too thin, it's not gonna puff up. It's gonna be kind of flat and a little bit disappointing. Now we're gonna cut this into two to two and a half inch pieces. I'm using a pizza dough roller and just gently roll across the top. Don't manhandle that dough. These do not have to be perfect either. And as you go, feel free to just kind of gently maneuver the dough and make sure it's not sticking. Now we're gonna cut this into squares. When your oil is 360, everything's all cut up and you have some paper towels laid out, we're gonna fry these up. I'm using a bench scraper to get these off of the counter. They're actually not sticking right now, but it really helps you move them around without having to manhandle them and like lose their shape too much. Just gently slide it into the oil, just like an ocean liner going out of the dock. There you go. You do not want an oil splash. That is a major no-no. I'll be taking these out using a spider. It's a really handy tool, but you could definitely use a slotted spoon if you don't have one. We can do three at a time, even four at a time if you feel like it, and just look for a nice golden color and then flip them over. These are gonna be so good and perfect with a cup of coffee. Once they're golden on both sides, just take them out with your spider, place them on some paper towels to sop up the excess oil, and repeat the process. Your only challenge is to not nibble on too many while you're frying them up. I ate half of my test batch the last time I made these before they got any powdered sugar on them. They're that good. Sugar. Oh, honey, honey. Last ones out of the oil. All we're gonna do now is dust them with powdered sugar. The amount is really up to you. I like a light dusting. These are like perfectly sweet, but if you wanna make a sugar monster cloud, it's totally okay. Dust it over the top. If you want, you could definitely do a double dust. No one's gonna mind that. I cannot wait to destroy all of these. If you like this video, check out my breakfast playlist. <laughs> that is so good. I'll see you in the next video.